gave, started the press interview at the palace. And the margin is that very uh, narrow, and what would be the content of his statement is attracting much attention. As soon as we know the result, it will be released in this news program. As for Mr. Laurel, sorry, as for Mr. Malkos, Mr. Malkos said that whenever there is a discrepancy between the numbers between Comlec and Namfrel, he cannot accept the result of Comlec. The voting trend has become clear. Both our own estimates and those of others who are independent in this matter project a Cori victory <coughs> of some 55 percent. Tensions are high, and I hope that once Mr. Marcos recognizes that my victory is irreversible, he will, in the best tradition of democratic politics, concede rather than prolong the period of uncertainty. In such a case, I hope that it will be possible to meet with Mr. Marcos in the early part of this coming week to make arrangements for a smooth and quick transition of power. This has been a violent and shameful election in terms of the fraud and intimidation. My margin of victory has been severely reduced by the brutal tactics of my opponents. And tragically, lives were lost but the fact that we won, despite all this, demonstrates the landslide support for the Aquino Laurel ticket. For all these uh, complaints, well, precautions uh, were taken to safeguard the ballot. Um, and uh, these precautions were adhered to with uh, punctilious uh, meticulousness. Um, the PC chief has reported that this was or has been one of the most peaceful elections ever held in our country. I refer to general dramas. Of course, the procedure for the orderly and proper tabulation of uh, the results um, is uh, quite clear. The commission in elections will tabulate the results, assisted by its citizens' arm. The National Movement for Free Elections and the Batasan Pambansa will also receive the official canvas of the votes, or more accurately, the certified uh, election results direct from the um, board of canvassers as certified by the election uh, registrar of every province, every city, or every district as quoted in the Constitution. Um, it is regrettable that Namfrel has um, uh, evidently uh, e either advisedly, deliberately or not violated its agreement with the Commission on Election for a simultaneous and coordinated tabulation of the results um, mm, through the courier of Namfrel getting this uh, copy of uh, the election result, and a, one copy being given to Comelec, and another copy uh, to the... The press interview is still going on. What Mr. Malkus has just mentioned is that there is a discrepancy between the figures announced by Comelec and those by Namfrel. And Mr. Malkos has emphasized the point that Comflec is the official commission. Whenever there's an important announcement, we'll follow that in this program. There's a discrepancy in the percentage announced by Comlec and Namfrel. It's perhaps due to the fact that uh, Comflec had started the canvassing mainly in the north of Luzon Island, whereas the Namfrel started the canvassing mainly from Metro Manila region. Although there's a difference in the percentage point, Mrs. Aquino is leading, definitely. And it appears that Mr. Malkos is uh, having a difficulty in this process, being led by Mrs. Aquino. The reason for the slow pace is that the local official commission body is very slow in sending the result of canvassing to the central body. 
supposed to get only election returns and deliver the returns to us. Did not give us the election returns but brought them to their tabulation in Green Hills. The uh, thing that should have been done is to bring to us our copy and then uh, later bring uh, their copy to Green Hills. It was the other way around. They brought their copies to the Green Hills and they did not bring any copy to us. So we did not have this uh, copies and that's why we were delayed. You know, the understanding with Comelec and, uh, and Namfrel is that uh, after the precinct tally count is uh, finished and certified to by the uh, Board of Election Inspectors on precinct level, we have to bring it to the municipal level and secure the uh, signature of the Comelec registrar. And therefore, operationally, we must wait for them. And uh, in many places the election registrar is either not available or is holding on to this therefore delaying the process it's been said that uh, there's not real participation by citizens in this electoral process but what's have been the reactions on the part of the citizens to the ele election process i think uh, aquino shall win not marcos and that's why I bought the newspapers yeah. to see the difference between Marcos and Cory. Uh, this Marcos wins. Yeah. The other one, Cory wins. wins. Yeah. Which do you believe? Cory, because uh, I think she really is the winner. Which is more dependable? I don't know. I myself were confused. So uh, we're still waiting for what is the final result. Reports from the Philippines say that there is a lot of confusion concerning the presidential election. The Philippines Armed Forces put nearly 90,000 men on the alert during the election. Lieutenant General Fidel Ramos, chief of the National Police, has described the election as the quietest one in recent years. In Davao and Mindanao, two leaders campaigning for Mrs. Aquino were shot. One of them died. Also in Mindanao, 11 people, including vote counters, were murdered in an attack. Armed men stormed into this polling station in Manila. There have been reports of confusion and rigging in voting and ballot counting. In northern Manila, a large number of ballots bearing the name of Mrs. Aquino were discovered in sewers. There have been differences between the flash announcements about the returns by the government's commission on election and the citizens' volunteer group NAMFREL. There is a report of trouble between the two sides. In Ilocos Norte, the home province of President Marcos, the deputy governor is reported to have ordered NAMFREL to stop tabulation work in all parts of the province. The United States is reported to be unhappy about the reported cases of election rigging. It had called for a fair election and sent a 20-member team of observers to the Philippines. One of the observers said he had seen varied evidence of wrongdoings. Senator Richard Luger, the leader of the U.S. team, said he had the impression that tabulation of the votes was being manipulated and that the counting was unfair. Now report from Washington on reaction in the United States. Our correspondent Hidetoshi Fujisawa in Washington reports that the U.S. administration has made no official comment on the election. The administration has been studying the vote counting around the clock. Officials are apparently irritated by the slow counting process. The Central Election Management Committee of the Philippine government says that only 5% of the votes have been counted so far. A U.S. administration source has expressed dissatisfaction. The U.S. supervisory delegation has expressed concern about the possibility that the counting is being manipulated. The U.S. administration also shares this concern. 
In the United States, people are most concerned that an unfair election might cause people in the Philippines to turn to violence. The U.S. government authorities are saying that it is too soon to predict on the election results. No matter who wins the election, the political future of the Philippines is of great interest to the U.S. Because, among other things, the, the two States U.S. bases there. happy with either, either outcome, either Marcos or Mrs. Aquino. However, if the election outcome is not free and fair, and if Marcos wins, but it is widely viewed that this election was corrupt or tainted or stolen, then we have a very serious crisis on our hand. The U.S. government will continue to keep a close watch on the situation. This is our correspondent in Washington, Hidetoshi Fujisawa. Execute is just law. Execute is just law. Do justice to every man. Do justice to every man. And consecrate myself. And consecrate myself. To the service of the nation. To the service of the nation. So help me God. So help me God. Whereas we have today, February 25, 1986, established a new government that is truly democratic and Filipino, its source being the sovereign will of the people, expressed so eloquently in the February 7, 1986 elections. Whereas the establishment of this new government will not be complete unless all the various critical governmental functions are entrusted in the hands of capable men and women now, therefore, by virtue of the powers vested in me as President of the Republic of the Philippines and pursuant to the mandate of the Filipino people, I hereby appoint Salvador H. Laurel as Prime Minister designate. Ponce Enrile as Minister of National Defense. I hereby promote Lieutenant General Fidel V. Ramos to full general. And I Ninja マルコス大統領は先生の後、就任の挨拶を行いまして、この中で我々は現在重大な障害に直面しているが、これを乗り越えて未来に向かって前進しなければならない。そのためには何よりも我々が固く団結する必要がある。このように述べましたが、一足先
支持者の間からイメルダ夫人に対して今の危機をどう乗り越えるのかという厳しい質問が投げかけられる一幕もありましたマラカニアン宮殿にはこの式典の最中も時折散発的な銃声が響きフィリピンの危機的な状況を反映した慌ただしい式典に終始しました。Taking place、uh, here in Quezon City、uh, seems to be very near your house、uh, because we can hear it from where we are, and I can- heard it over the phone. Well, in fact,、uh, right now, June,、uh, my security are hurrying me up.、Uh, in a few minutes, I should be out of this.、Place. I know that, that the Lord now they're backing up. Front with the nuns and the priests, you know, it's like saying, hey, I got nothing to lose. I'm gonna- Ferdinand Marcos, as well as anyone, is stepping down in his personal character. I think、uh, in the end he will realize that、uh, that will be the only option available to him unless、uh, he really、um, means what he said that he is willing to die inside the palace. まあ、今日一日の動きをドキュメントでご覧いただきましたけれども、まあ、こうした事態をアメリカはどのように受け止めてどう対応しようとしているのかこのワシントンの藤沢特派員に伝えてもらいますフィリピンの膠着死体死体を受けて再びマリナに向かった元国務次官のハビブ大統領特使は一旦ホノルルで事態の展開を待つことにしていますアメリカ政府筋はハビブ氏の任務は平和的な政権交代を促すとともに後継政権とアメリカとの関係の調整という意味もあるとしておりまして、マルコス政権の交代は。フィリピンの秋の新大統領は先ほど閣僚名簿を発表し、新政権がスタートしました。政府は秋の新政権を事実上承認し、経済の立て直しに協力していく方針です。大臣と日教祖の田中委員長はいじめの背景に過熱した受験競争があるという認識で一致しました
こんばんは。こんばんは。秋の新政権下のフィリピン情勢、七時のニュースは今夜もこのフィリピン情勢を中心に七時半まで三十分間お伝えいたします。Now we have a report on Mrs. Aquino's news conference. Later, we'll have another report on the situation in Manila following the establishment of the Aquino government. The new president of the Philippines, Mrs. Corazon Aquino, held her first press conference as president at six o'clock this evening, Japan time, and announced the cabinet. President Aquino has given the first news conference since she was sworn in. It began shortly after six o'clock this evening, Japan time in Manila. She said that the Vice President, Mr. Salvador Laurel, would be the Foreign Minister as well as the Prime Minister. It was decided earlier that the Defense Minister, Mr. Juan Ponsanriel, would retain his post. Mr. Jam Ongping, a leading adviser, was named finance minister. Mr. Ramon Mitra, the deputy minority floor leader in the National Assembly, is minister of agriculture. And Mr. Jose Concepcion, the leader of the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, or NAMFREL, is the trade and industry minister. Hi, hi.、Uh, This is our correspondent, Toshiyuki Sato. The new president, Mrs. Aquino, held a press conference about six o'clock Japan time. In that press conference, Mrs. Aquino first expressed her gratitude for all the support she has received, and then she gave a list of the new cabinet lineup. There are 18 ministers, according to the Philippine Constitution, and. Mrs. Aquino today announced the names of 18 of the ministers today. The foreign minister and the post of the prime minister will be held by Vice President Salvador Laurel. And as was mentioned already, Mr. Enrile will be serving as the defense minister. Mr. Onpin will be serving as the finance minister. He is one of the key advisors to Mrs. Laurel. His brother also served as the trade minister in the Marcos administration. However, it seems that the two brothers are not faring well these days, since the two brothers had fought each other. During the presidential election, Mr. Jose Concepcion has been named the Trade and Industry Minister. He headed the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections (NAMFREL), which helped expose fraud during the elections. Mr. Jose Concepcion has been a steadfast supporter of Mrs. Aquino. Formerly, Mrs. Imelda Marcos held the post of the Environment Minister, but this post has been cancelled or stopped by the new president. With the birth of the new administration led by Mrs. Aquino, we have more details about what happened today by reporter Shimazu. Our reporter Hachinari Shimazu. This building served as Mrs. Aquino's private office until a few days ago. Now it's used as a provisional presidential office. President Aquino did not move into Malacanang Palace today. She began her business as president in this building instead. Many people have visited her here today. The Japanese ambassador to the Philippines, Mr. Kiyoshi Sumia, was one of the first visitors.
The American ambassador, Mr. Stephen Bosworth, came in the afternoon. There was a surprise in the evening when members of the former Marcos cabinet, including the former prime minister, Mr. Cesar Virata, and the vice premier, Mr. Jose Rono, paid a visit to Mrs. Aquino. The former information minister, Mr. Gregorio Sendana, also came. Mr. Sendana organized anti-Aquino propaganda during the election campaign. He was rumored to have left for another country. It's hard to judge whether the former cabinet ministers are being apologetic or offering congratulations. This is our reporter, the political arena in the Philippines seems rather confusing at the moment, but the excitement that had prevailed throughout the country until yesterday seems to have subsided. The banks are open now, first time in five days, and many of the shops are also resuming their daily business operations. As for the expectations that people have for the new president, we have some comments now. And do you think uh, your life getting better under the new president? I think so, yes. Why? Well, because uh, we, have, we had President Marcos for 20 years already, and uh, we can see what he has done. You when. Know? Uh, with Corey, I think uh, we'll have a better life. Daily life? Yeah. Well, just an ordinary, just we want to have a freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of uh, press, freedom of everything. Not that we want to be a rich man. Freedom. That is for the change within 20 years of um, poverty here in our... It, maybe she can help our countrymen to have some so can pan work. What's the best thing to do is just give her a chance first, no? Because we, we, we also do not know what's her capacity. But we know she can make it. Mrs. Aquino, the new president, has somehow managed to unify the opposition parties. But now that she has actually assumed the post of president, it will be very difficult for her to continue unifying the opposition forces. The cabinet lineup that was announced today seems to indicate that there's a balance between the various posts delegated to the opposition parties. Mr. Marcos was flown out of the Philippines in an American C-9 transport jet early this morning and arrived at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam at around 9.30 a.m. The plane was followed by another U.S. Air Force jet carrying relatives and supporters. Altogether, 55 Filipinos are said to have been flown out in the planes. Mr. Marcos will receive a medical checkup at the U.S. Naval Hospital in Agana, Guam. He was so exhausted that he was carried to the plane on a stretcher, but by the time he got to Guam, he had recovered and walked down the landing steps on his own. The acting governor of Guam, Mr. Edward DeRace, has said that Mr. Marcos will leave for Honolulu tonight. A U.S. military source in Hawaii says that Mr. Marcos will arrive at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, Japan time. NHK spoke to the source on the telephone. Mr. Marcos will leave Guam for Hawaii after a medical checkup. He will arrive at the Hickam Air Force Base and he will either stay at a place believed to be his villa or a U.S. military base in the suburbs of Honolulu. The Japanese government has welcomed the new government of the Philippines led by Mrs. Corazon Aquino, but Japan will now have to review relations with the Philippines, including economic cooperation. Asked whether the Japanese government would recognize the new government, the Prime Minister, Mr. Nakasone, says that the government issued a statement in the name of the Foreign Minister, Mr. Abe, at midday. He says that the statement contained congratulations on the inauguration of the new president and vice president and expressed the intention of promoting friendly relations. He says that the statement may be taken as de facto recognition.
Foreign Minister Shintaro Abe says that Japan should extend further aid and cooperation to the Philippines in the wake of the latest developments. Our reporter, Takayuki Fujimori. The Japanese government has been very concerned about developments because Japan has close economic relations with the Philippines. The Philippines also plays a central role in the ASEAN Association and has an important strategic value in the Western Pacific. The Japanese government was quick to express support for the new Philippine government because of its strong desire for the establishment of a stable and democratic government. The government will watch how President Aquino consolidates the new administration. It intends to offer more economic and other assistance. Mrs. Aquino, during her presidential election campaign, said that Japanese economic aid would strengthen the Marcos government, but Japan is now likely to be asked to play an active role to help stabilize the situation in the Philippines. Japan will have to study its past cooperation with the Philippines.